call the meeting to order at six o'clock. <clears throat> Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 23rd. It was a regular meeting. I shall move. I'll second it. All right. Is there any discussion? The red circle is confusing. All right. Hearing none, so moved. Um, board correspondence. We have anything? Public comments. Do we have any public comments? Nope. Look at that. We're already on number six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Jamie, your report. Oh, and um, I think at this point, Stacy is the only new member who has been. Um, so maybe we just say hi to Stacy. Oh, yeah. We Stacey can go around just and do popped it. on. Hi, Stacy. So maybe do some inter quick introductions. Yeah, we'll start at the top, Stacy, and do introductions, and then you can introduce yourself, okay, to the full board. Uh, Amy, you want to start? She froze. I think she. Oh, oh no. there she goes. Okay, there we go. Yay! Hi, I am Amy Wilt. I am the uh, chair of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. And Sylvia. I'm Sylvia Moore of the Sharon School District. Dustin? Did you hear me, Dustin? Okay. No, still Eric, go ahead. Hi, I'm Eric Lopez from the Stratford School District. And Andrew? I'm Andrew Jones. I'm chair of the White River Unified District Board. And Siobhan? Hi, I'm Siobhan. I'm, I'm Graham. All right, and? Hi, Stacey. I'm Bill Edgerton. I'm a teammate with Amy. <laughs> Rochester Stockbridge. And go ahead. Nancy Pejui. I'm on the WRUD board <laughs> from Bethel. All right, and you know a lot of the players here in the room with us, but I'll let them go around. And you know me, I'm Kathy. And I'll let everybody go around the table. Go ahead, Jamie. Stacy, we've met. It's good to see you again. Michaela Martin, Intensive Programming System Support Coordinator here at WRVSU. Hi, Stacy. It's Tara. We met at your last board meeting. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, Stacy. I don't think you can see me in the small in the small camera, but I'm uh, Anna Adams, Chief Academic Officer for the SU. Hi, Annette Rhodes. I'm the Director of Special Services for the SU. Ray Ballou, Technology and Communications. And you can go ahead, Stacy. Great. Um, thank you. Sorry for my disheveled appearance. I was trying to get some of my garden in real quick. Um, <laughs> I always bite off more than I can chew. Um, so my name's Stacy Dion. I am from the Tunbridge First Branch um, unified district. And this is my first, uh, full board meeting. So I appreciate your patience with me and, uh, just hope to learn a lot from everybody going forward. All right. And Maggie just, joined. Oh, Maggie, you just joined. We were just doing introductions. There, I had to find my microphone. Hi, everyone. I'm Maggie Hooker. I'm on the Stratford board. This is, um, I think, my second or third year on the full board. Second. I think I missed last season. So um, I look forward to working with you this year. All right. Michael, we're, we're doing introductions. Stacy Dion is the new board member for First Branch, so we were just letting her meet everyone. Hello, Stacy. Oh, hey, Michael. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. You look well. Oh, you should see what I looked like 10 minutes ago. Sorry I'm late. Um, <laughs> and Maggie, it's good to see you, too. Got time for a bike ride. Um, hello, everybody. So I'm Michael Sharon Board. All right. And Dustin, you didn't get a chance to talk before because you were stuck, I think. 
Yeah, sorry, my uh, my audio, of course, was having some issues. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so I'm assuming we're going around saying who we are and stuff? Yep. All right, I'm Dustin Ray, and I'm at uh, the, I'm on the Stratford School Board uh, with, uh, let's see, uh, Maggie and, um, and Eric here. So, uh, yeah, so um, that's what I do. That's why. <laughs> Nice. Well, all right. So, and then Bill. Oh, Bill, you're here too now. Bill, you, would you like to do an introduction? Yeah, I'm Bill Smith. I uh, live in Chelsea and a member of the uh, First Branch uh, School Board and I think a reserve member of this group. So, yeah. And I want to say, wow, this is pretty awesome. We have a pretty big crowd on tonight. I like it. Yeah. Nice. Good showing. All right, so, and we are to 7.1 superintendent report. Uh, so you all have my report in hand. Um, just uh, hopefully folks had a chance to look at the alcohol and drug-free workplace. That policy has started to be approved by district boards. That's a revised policy. I'm hopeful that we might be able to take action for that one tonight. Um, and then also in your packets, I hope folks had an opportunity to review the communications plan um and uh strategic enrollment plan that's in your packet that is a fourth draft of that uh that's up for consideration tonight and then there's a discussion and possible action on uh, portrait of a learner um and uh bill edgerton has shared out um, some thoughts that he had in response to the portrait of a learner that we had shared out as a supervisory union so we'll discuss that tonight um you know in general Schools wind up, not down, so I apologize for the, um, usually my reports are a little more um, expansive in regard to written text. The last week was busy, but hopefully you saw the work that's been underway in regards to some of the documents that we also incorporated into your board packet. Um, you know, we are in a place where as schools, um, our buildings are trying to wrap up this year, right, and put a really good expl explanation mark on it. Also looking at the summer in regards to summer programming, interventions, and supports, while also planning for what teams are gonna be meeting this summer to make adjustments for next school year. And of course, we're also trying to finalize schedules and things for next school year. Um, so, you know, in general, your buildings, I would say that if you were to ask any of your principals, they would probably tell you right now is the busiest time of year um for them and for the work of their staffs because as i say schools wind up uh they don't wind down um so just wanted to um highlight those things and then you know in regards to the legislative session by all accounts it appears the governor has allowed the yield bill to go into law uh without his signature um i haven't been able to find any i've looked on the um the legislative page. I haven't found where the governor took action, but we're long past his uh, veto period at this point. So my sense is that that bill will become law um, without execution um, of approval from the governor. But that yield bill did result in a, a higher yield number than we had used with most districts. The only um, district that we were able to show that number to folks in regards to the final estimated tax rate would have been Granville Hancock um, by the time that folks had uh, approved that. And for some districts, you know, it, well, actually for most of our districts, it was almost two cents in a positive direction. So what we would have estimated as your finalized tax rate will be almost two cents less than what we had communicated at the time um, of the approval of budgets across the supervisory union. Um, and we were successful in getting um, all of our budgets approved um, across the supervisory union. So that, that is good. And, um, you know, what I would say to the board is one of the things that's upcoming is that we'll start to do some preparation um, in regards to uh, getting prepared for negotiations. We are in teacher negotiations next year. My sense is that those conversations will start um, hopefully in the early part of the fall. Um, and we're hoping for that because certainly those, ne those negotiations and conversations will help assist us as we're preparing budgets for the next year. Um, you know, I, I would say to the board, 
my sense is, is that next budget season will be as challenging, um, if not more, than the current budget season was. So um, just know that I, I expect that, that we're going to have some work to do in regards to budgeting. And then a reminder with that yield bill, there is a task force that's been created, which no longer has representation um, from the field. They changed the makeup of the task force to make recommendations in regards to um, how we might go about sustainability for the Ed Fund and or structural changes for uh, how we uh, provide public education in the state. Um, there's no longer stakeholders as far as principals or superintendents really? um, incorporated in regards to that committee. Wow. That language was um, removed by the Senate um, mm -hmm. before it got approved by, from the floor of the Senate. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to just make certain everyone knew, I know there was concerns in regards to the literacy bill around the use of banning the three queuing system. That language had been removed from that bill. Um, that language did go uh, into law, but that, that three queuing, the use of banning the three queuing was removed. Um, so I wanted folks to know that because we had talked about that. Um, and then I'll entertain any questions folks may have um, in regards to the work that's happening here and or as the legislative session wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Any questions, anyone, for Jamie? It's not a question. It's a commendation to the White River Valley Supervisory Union, our superintendent, the superintendent's team, our principals, our teachers, our staff. Uh, we've added a thousand. We didn't get the Sharon Elementary School bond vote. But when you look at what happened in this state and all the angst, it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't like we were just quirky. No. What happened six for six in our SU was based on community confidence, confidence, credibility, competence of our staff, uh, and a, an effective school board so at the district level and the SU. And I'll commend Kathy because she's here tonight. Uh, it wasn't easy. We took... All of us have scars a little bit here. We're tired. I think they're ready to have a, a well-deserved summer off. Uh, but I, it, I think we should not miss this opportunity to celebrate. This is not the norm in my readings on, on Vermont, 55 school boards and districts and supervisory unions. We were the exceptions to the rule here, and we were successful. And I think we should feel good about this. I think we should go home and, if we haven't already, celebrate, whether it's a drink or a smile or a meditation or looking at nature, um, or ride a horse. Um, <laughs> or all the this above. is good. Or this all is the good. above, right? This is good. I, I would agree with you, Bill. It's really awesome. And thank you guys for all the hard work that got, got us to the finish line on all of these budgets. Um, okay, so anything else for Jamie? Um, Jamie, would you mind just uh, elaborating a little bit on why you think next year is gonna be more challenging than this year, potentially? Yeah, because I mean, they, they put in some one-time funding to help you know, continue to increase the yield. They haven't addressed um, some of the concerns around Act 127, and I don't see any positive outlook for some of the cost drivers across the state in regards to the Ed Fund. Um, and so, you know, everyone that I've talked to um, continues to have concerns. And, you know, one of the things as we look into negotiations that we have to be aware of as well is that some of the um, collective bargaining agreements that have been agreed to continue to increase rates of pay um, in the coming years. And so, and those will compound around the statewide ed funds. So, um, and it is important for folks to remember that they did use some one-time funds once again to help um, support the, the ed fund this, this past term. And, and I don't, and I, from listening to what our town said, finding people to do the reappraisal, that's not gonna be done by next year. So we're gonna be up against that again. Our common level appraisals are gonna be low again. Stacy. 
Is there anything we can do proactively um, to maybe prepare or defray that cost for next summer for the taxpayers? Well, you know, I think for what we've been trying to do locally is try to keep our spending in a, a place that it's that it's predictable, right? And we've certainly tried to leverage our federal funds in a way that it didn't result in ongoing costs, Stacy, that we had to add positions. So all of our positions are currently funded. Our ESSER funding does run out this coming fall, but all those positions are funded in the local budgets now. We're not carrying those. So I think we've done as much as, the, and we've also tried to put reserves away so that we have those to help support building costs and things ongoing. And when you look at some of our projected surpluses, we'll have some funds there once again that boards will have to discuss how much do we look to use as one-time offsets for tax rates versus possibly putting away for the future. Um, you know, our tuition districts now all have created tuition reserve funds, which wasn't the case in the past. I think that was wise. And we've been trying to fund those um, so that we have some uh, funds that can have offset possible expenditures. And Granville Hancock was a good example of that this past year, where we did tap into their tuition reserve fund as an offsetting revenue to try to alleviate some of the tax increase that they were seeing due to significant drops in the CLA. Um, so I think we've done a good job of being primed. You know, the thing that we have to do is community, continue to educate our constituents that we are only a piece of this puzzle and that the statewide ed fund really is a huge contributor to what their overall tax rate may be. One more question, Jamie. Um, the surpluses that we have currently, what are we doing with that money to maximize, like, interest income that might help defray costs going forward. Are we investing that well? well? We've, we've got an investment policy that the board's gonna see tonight as a first draft. So yes, the plan cool. is to start doing that, yes. Thank you. The good news is, is as Tara's been showing you at your local district boards, Part of some of where we're doing well right now is that um, due to having some surplus funds, we've been able to continue to keep our tax anticipation notes um, in interest earning accounts so that our, uh, our investment revenue is projecting to be much higher than what we had originally estimated because we haven't had to t tap into that tax anticipation note. Any other questions for Jamie? All right, and Onda. Good evening. Um, I think it echoes a lot of what Jamie already said in terms of where the bulk of the work is uh, in these final <clears throat> weeks of school. We're focused a lot on transition, making sure that we know um, both how well our students have progressed and grown over the course of the year, but also identify where we know we still will have an opportunity to support them in the fall and trying to think about passing along all of the important information from grade level to grade level, which is a little easier. And then from school to school, where we have students who are transitioning, you know, within, within between schools and within the SU. So we've been uh, working on that. We're using um, an electronic transition form that we piloted within EduClimber, which is what we, where we've been collecting all of our data and starting to build that out. So um, it's a, another <clears throat> use of that system that we could pilot and, um, and try to pull all the information together. Uh, and then having a lot of uh, meetings with teachers and interventionists and principals thinking about those transitions and both kind of assessing for this year and setting up for next year. Uh, we are used, getting a lot of data right now at the end of the year. Um, it is a, it's both a good time to, to figure out where students are at the end of the year and it's also a really challenging time as there's a lot of competing interests in terms of um, end of the year celebrations, things that are really much more interesting than sometimes sitting down in front of a computer and, and showing all your math knowledge. So uh, teachers are doing a um, yeoman's work trying to, to balance all of that and, um, and both get that, that good assessment on where students are and continue to uh, um, bring the fun into school that uh, kids are here for, and especially in May and June. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I think, yeah, we've also had with uh, a lot with um, Michaela's support here, uh, educators in this room 
throughout May working on the last of the proficiency work, um, particularly in areas of science, health, and social studies in the elementary grades. And so uh, that has been, again, not, a, not always an easy time to pull educators out of the, out of the classroom to work on that, but um, absolutely vital to have their input on it. So excited to move that forward um, as we head into the, into the summer. I think that's it. Happy to talk about anything or answer any questions. Do you want me to call him? I'm yeah, sorry. Eric. So what Anna doesn't say um, is that she also um, spearheaded the search committee for Stratford's um, new principal. Um, and we are, uh, uh, I owe her a, a debt of gratitude for the work that that committee did um, at, at her with her guidance, um, which is aside from everything else that she puts in her report. So th thank you very much, Anna. Thank you, Eric. Very good. Nice. <laughs> right. Anything else, Rhonda? I had a question. A question it might be Anna or it might be Jamie. It's every year is tough. Every year is fulfilling, but I'm an optimistic guy, but I know that it's tough and you go through things that you don't care to share, you just want to try to overcome and deal with as effectively and passionately as you can. Going into the end of our academic year, what's the mood? I, I, I'm sure it's mixed here or something, but is there some way you can share with us whether it, it's, it's dark and uh, it, we see the light, it's brighter, it's are we on our heels or move are feeling moving forward? What's what, what's a sense of our organization now going into this last month of our year? You want to go? <laughs> go I, mean, I mean, I think in general, I mean, our turnover has been the least amount that we've had since I've been here. Right. So I think that that speaks to That's folks who are feeling good. Um, the meaning our teacher turnover. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I would say that I think folks are tired. I would expect them to be this time of year, right? Like, it's, it's incredibly challenging. There's a lot happening. On top of that, we do a lot of celebrations at the end of the year, right? So we've got staff out a lot this time of year to celebrate the, the good work that they've all done, but that also makes long days. So, you know, I would say in general, if I was to look across the supervisory union, um, I think folks are pretty proud of the work they're doing. Like, you know, when I talk to teachers, um, you know, I think some buildings have greater challenges than others, even some buildings within a district, right? Like, so, you know, but I would say in general, um, you know, I, I see teachers, example, working on curriculum work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and they've got smiles on their faces when I check in with them. Like they're feeling good about that work. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good, to me, that's a good pulse on how things are doing. They're not, I don't hear grumbling, like I hear them laughing. I see, you know, mm -hmm. I see them doing great work. And when we're doing that in May, mm -hmm. I'll take that as a win. Yeah, mm -hmm. not that there's not challenges, of course there is. But um, in general, I think that that's a really good indicator. And we get teachers wanting to do that work and teachers want to, you know, do work right after the school year ends at best in mm -hmm. June. We got teams going throughout the SU, so I'm feeling pretty optimistic. I think that in general, you know, as far as, um, you know, I meet with our, our union leadership every two weeks. And, you know, in general, folks are feeling really good and feeling good about their budgets passed as well, that they're yeah. feeling supported, right? Like. You know, we're not in a position where most of my colleagues are right now. I mean, there's lots of districts reducing in force by, mm. you know, Which 20 might. and plus teachers. We're not in that position as an organization right now. So I, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that speaks good to what we're trying to do into the future. Okay. Thank you. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Jumped it off. Up to you. Yeah. All right. I was like, where are we on this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, again, a lot of ditto to what's been shared. There's a lot of kind of closing out a school year while planning a summer, while prepping and planning for the fall. Um, so I'm doing a lot of work with our special educators around that. I'm working with um, Haley Zerride. 
um, around summer um, camp, but also intervention. Um, and that's looking really good and really positive. I'm looking forward to that this summer. Um, just an extension of last month, they did like a really long list of um, hires. And there were a couple that um, were like in, in the process of hiring. Um, just a, again, a celebration. Um, we were able to hire a, a behavioral analyst for the SU. Um, her name is Emily. She and her family will be moving to the area um, in August. Um, so that's wonderful, uh, very highly skilled, really great experience. Um, I just had a great interview um, before coming in tonight with a speech pathologist. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, that'll be great. Um, I've been able to secure two occupational therapists. So things um, in the hiring area are looking up. So it's continuing to look really good. Um, and so, yeah, so that's just, you know, all of that between the prepping and planning and um, the hiring process that just takes a lot of time. And that's been, been a huge focus um, as part of getting us ready for next year. So I'll take any questions or comments. Any questions for that? Anyone? Thank you very much, yeah, ma'am. Sure. All right, and we are on to Miss Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. I did provide in the report the overall FY25 budgets per pupil spending, long-term weighted average, and estimated tax rate that I share with you each year so that you had that information. Mm -hmm. Wanted to celebrate uh, Misha Johnson, our child nutrition coordinator for the supervisory union, has been working with some community organizations. And we're actually going to be providing over the summer weekend meals for all students that are enrolled into the One Planet program. Awesome. And we're also going to be supporting with the town of West Fairley and one of their community organizations to be doing um, seven day meal kits for their families that need it. So we're pretty okay. excited about that and expanding our services That's throughout our child nutrition yeah. program. And then lastly, I provided a quarter three projection for the supervisory union um, and special education budget. So overall, uh, as you can see on the expenditure side of the things, we have about $232,000 of potential savings in our budgets versus contracts issued in the salary line. Health budget versus actual enrollment, and this is as of our January open enrollment changes. We have about 117,000 there. And then the biggest area of savings right now um, on the expenditure side is our special education tuition. So kudos to- How often do you hear that? Right, That's kudos to all of our staff <laughs> and families yeah. on keeping our students um, within our supervisory so, union. So good. So on the revenue, the downside of that on the revenue yeah. side is also reduces our excess cost reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that on the revenue side of the budget. Mm -hmm. And then the only other big difference on the revenue side was uh, that we didn't have as much in our IDEAB preschool grant mm -hmm. that we had originally budgeted for, yeah. um, but we had a little bit more in our triple E grant, so it offset that difference. So between the projected revenue and the projected expenditure, we're looking at potentially just shy of 375,000 potential surplus for the supervisory union for both central office and special education. Nice. Great and then work. I'll guys. answer any questions that I can. Questions anyone? I think, awesome work. Thank I think you. It's a, how can you not feel well? We're we're projecting almost three hundred seventy five thousand yeah. dollars mm -hmm. that that are Jamie was talking about going into another tough fiscal year next year, and that if we can go in with some of that, comparing that with last year, which wasn't was a little under three hundred thousand. We're really on a roll, to continue on the roll, and it, I wish I understood, you know, fifty percent of how you do it. <laughs> yeah. um, the nice thing is that I feel, and we all feel, very confident that the numbers are good, and they're based on um, not luck but performance. Mm 
right. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Ray. Thank you. <coughs> As I uh, bring out my report, I'd be happy to uh, field any questions virtually or here in person. <coughs> and uh, Something I would like to add is in uh, our review of our student information system, we uh, surveyed outgoing seniors at White River Valley High School and of their responses, uh, just as a you know, piece of a data point, mm -hmm. students, a third of students log in each day to check on their grades and the other two thirds in logging in weekly. Sorry, something went awry <laughs> with the panel here in the room, if you can still hear me. Okay. Where was I? Logging in, students logging in, uh, to look at their uh, grades and attendance and course schedule. And 88% uh, of students uh, specifically are logging in to look at their grades. Obviously, I think. Uh, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Any part of my... Any questions for Ray? I, I'm the dummy in the room. Um, it never occurred to me that the SIS system supported students. I always thought that it was information for the teachers, for the special educators, for the principal, for the administrative staff to figure out how we're doing, how we can change it, per, student by student, grade by grade, school by school. And here I read in your report that this, this is valuable, potentially valuable information for a student. So could you expand on that? Because I think we might, I might not be the only one that doesn't understand how the SAS system actually supports our students. Sure. So students would log in to uh, see their uh, assignments each day, each week, depending on what grade level they're at. And uh, one interesting comment that one of the students in the survey said was their suggestion about improving the system would yeah. be to, uh, to create a system that would warn students who weren't on track to pass a course, which sounds <laughs> yeah. eerily familiar to what the state is talking about is an early warning system. They've been talking about that over the last couple of years. Yeah. So, so yeah, students today and now at the Bethel Middle and at the White River Valley High School log in, mm -hmm. look at their grades, assignments, transcript, mm -hmm. different aspects of that. As part of the report card rollout for the fall, that'll expand to middle school in Stratford-Newton and first branch chess. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because I didn't have a clue. And the second thing is you had a link for, uh, I think the middle school report card, the new report card in it. Mm -hmm. it. It didn't show us the actual academic uh, classes, English, math, science, history, and all that sort of, it showed kind of the extracurricular, but important aspects. And I, I think all, the whole board here and the district boards would at some time in the future, see examples of our report cards, elementary, middle, and in high school, the full full Monte. And because I, um, this was new to me, and I'm sorry, I'm going to sleep at the wheel. But I think we all could use a reminder once in a while. Yep. So that's actually the the elementary report card. The, the middle school one's not quite done yet. What was in, linked in the report? Yep. But it will look very similar. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Um, sorry. Uh, for the EduClimber stuff, does it track my progress results? Do you have to put those in manually, or do the systems connect so that you can just, you know, upload it automatically? Uh, somewhere in between, semi-automatically. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you have to take it out of track my progress to put it into EduClimber. Okay. So it's kind of export, import type thing. Yep. Now, just in what you were saying, where some of the teachers were noticing something, you know, missing data, you know, it seems like if you're trying to make sure all your students got tested or something like that, being able to see that in real time would be useful rather than waiting till the end of the window when it's too late to go back and find somebody. Um, teachers would see that first and track my progress. Right. So they're looking in both places. Just this edge climber is kind of for. So EduClimber right. shows them the overview across all of the assessments. Right. Track okay. of progress, tables, UTK. Wow. Yep. Okay. All right. Anything else? 
Okay. Uh, policy committee. Possible action of uh, revision of policy B3, alcohol and drug free workplace, and reading number one of the S F10 investment policy. Um, has everybody had a chance to look at both policies? Some boards have already started approving B3, the mm -hmm. revised B3. And we haven't had any critical feedback on B3, but. So. Sharon's um, approved it and White River Unified Districts approved it. So let's talk about B3 first. Um, <coughs> does somebody want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to accept um, policy B3 as right. written. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Is there any discussion on the policy? All right. Hearing none, we'll do a, um, we'll do a vote. All those in favor to approve policy B3, alcohol and drug-free workplace, say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Hearing none, it so passes. Thank you, guys. And then on the other policy we worked on, we finished up at our meeting right before this um, with a couple of edits. Do you want to go over those? Yeah, so we correct, corrected the final preservation of principle to, spit, to do principle correctly. And then we struck the last sentence of that. So to read the investment strategy of the plan is such that the net realizable, realizable value of investment should not fall below the initial investment value, period. And this is just... This one is not to be approved tonight. Yeah, no, no, no. This is a first reading. This is just our first there. reading, and we're just letting you know what we changed it, changed, and then we moved it out of policy. So now we're all getting our first reading of it. And Stacy, you had a question? Yes. Is this on the um, the um, shared drive? I'm just trying to blow it up. So it would have been in your board packet. Okay. No, it's not listed yet because it's just coming out of committee. Gotcha. Um, and and Stacy, if you if you can't read it tonight, but you read it after and you have edits or changes, you can email Jamie um, and then we'll get to the policy committee at our next meeting. So this is just this is just our first reading of it tonight. We're not going to vote and take action. This is just the, our first look and everybody has an opportunity to take it back and look at it and and make comments or, or changes as they s deem necessary. Cool. Um, is it possible, I don't know if Ray could drop the link in the chat here in the meeting? Yeah, we'll work on that, Stacy. The, um, the other part was donated funds, such as a donation left as a trust or scholarship fund will be invested as directed by the party during initial receipt of the donation if instructions differ from above, meaning from the, uh, the aforementioned pieces of the policy was added tonight, okay? That last, if instructions differ from above. So this will get cleaned up and then you'll start to see it in your local district uh, board packets. And we, just so uh, to remind new board members, we, we, we always do two readings before we would do an action on a new policy. This is not a revised policy. This is a new one. Yeah. And it gets worn in the papers and all that good stuff. All right. Any questions before we move on from this one, guys? No, I, just my observation of this draft is a balance that we want to preserve our, the principle of what, what we started with. But at the same time, we want to achieve the highest rate of return given the fact that we don't want to take a risk to lose that basic principle. Okay, that's a very important balance, in my opinion, and I'm kind of asking the, the policy committee. It means to be the balance. I've seen um, no risk, and it's all bonds, and they make we make nothing. And you got a gazillion percent security. But we don't make build any growth investment in our investment. So I'm reading this is that we want to be uh, uh, prudent and we don't want to lose the, the initial principle. But at the same time, we want to take advantage of 
uh, of, of, of wise investment strategy to grow that investment over time. And is, is that a fair um, interpretation of this policy? That yeah, certainly characterizes what we've been talking okay, about. Because I, that's a balance to me. Uh, and, um, and I think that's very wise. Thank you. And Stacy. Yes, um, right now, I mean, to be completely safe, you could put stuff in a high yield savings account at plus 5%. So, I mean, there are a lot of uh, avenues for very, very safe uh, investment at this time. So I think we have a good opportunity here. Thank you. All right, so that is it for 7.6. Um, under discussion items, we have draft number four of the WRVSU communication and outreach plan with possible action tonight. So since uh, the last draft, we incorporated feedback we received from board members um, in regards to updates to the plan. Um, you'll notice now that all of our actionable tasks have been aligned and numbered similar to the strategic plan around um, articles underneath each goal. Um, we also made certain to update some of our photos to ensure that we sh demonstrated the learning that occurs across all levels of the organization. I was appreciative for that feedback, um, meaning that the picture didn't capture necessarily our secondary students as much as it did our elementary. Um, and I, you know, based on the feedback provided thus far from the board, we've tried to incorporate all the different levels of feedback we've received. I'm excited to try to get this approved either tonight or in June because it actually serves us as a roadmap for some summer work that we need to be doing in regards to increasing our community outreach and engagement. It certainly gives direction um, for our community school coordinator and our coordinator of communication. I really see it as a way for us to progress monitor some of that work. We do plan at our admin retreat with principals to spend an entire day uh, focused on the work of this plan. Um, also in review and progress monitoring of a strategic plan as we enter in to year three of that plan. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite um, excited about um, the work articulated in this. Um, I think it does a really good job of uh, addressing the work of the community schools. I think it does a great job of trying to provide some structure for both internal and external communication. I'm hopeful that it ends up um, serving our families well in regards to navigating communication within the organization. And if you look at the task outlined in it, it talks about how we do a better job uh, providing that information for our families um, and then um, also it has a built-in cycle in regards to review so that we ensure that we're progress monitoring it on a regular basis and we added uh, a conclusion letter um, the road ahead from Kathy and I as well anybody got questions Andrew um, sorry, I didn't bring this feedback up earlier, but I think it, it's a great document and I really love the approach and how well it organized and set out it is. But the one thing I think that is missing, um, we do in the document, it does a great job of being proactive about encouraging feedback from students and from families and communicate, uh, community members, but we don't have the same thing in the teacher section. And I think it would be worthwhile to have kind of proactive asking the teachers for feedback on how they're doing and you know like what they're seeing um, so i don't know if it's possible to add that absolutely i will comment on that i think it's um well put but the goal of Goal four, internal communication, strengthen and maintain staff teamwork through open two-way communication. And I think, Andrew, that's, that's why. Right, I just, I just mean that there's, 
steps for encouraging, like the three steps that are listed are all the one way and all the other gotcha. like ones have that second way elaborated in, in like discrete steps that we're going to do. So I think it would be good to think of some, you know, like we're going to survey the teachers once a year on whatever, or, you know, provide things we do now that we didn't capture. Yes. Right. Exactly. The other thing is, if you look at which is new and not in the last draft is the road ahead um, written by Kathy and Jamie that speaks over and over and over again. If I heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times from our superintendent. Two way, he open door, the phone is available and um, he manages by walking around and our staff manages by walking around and that facilitates communication between the team and the public and families and students and uh, our staff. So we've got that embedded. I'm, I'm hearing your suggestion that it might be more explicit under the goal number four. Uh, I think we're practicing it, and it just I doesn't hurt to be able to to um, to articulate that maybe a little clearer uh, of what we're doing, and we believe in it. This is an organization that believes in that. Uh, that's the exciting thing about this communication plan. It is, in, in my opinion, enormously ambitious. I mean, there are a lot of steps here, a lot of things going on on top of everything else everybody in this room does. And it just speaks to the importance of adequate, proactive communication, effective communication, if we're going to get our job done. One reason we were six for six, in my opinion, on the budgets, that we built that social capital based on good communication and results, and, and the voters voted in the affirmative. Um, and this is, to me, a very proactive, strategic approach to make sure we don't take it gr granted that we need to be strong in our communication uh, planning um, and action uh, and performance if we're going to survive in this very challenging time of public education in Vermont. So um, I speak too much, but I, um, if you haven't read The Road Ahead, please read that letter because um, it really puts in a couple paragraphs exactly what we're all about. Okay. Anybody else? Comments, questions, feedback? Is that something that can be, we can approve it and that those things that, that Andrew suggested um, get added? I mean, I'm fine with if, if folks are comfortable at this point, if we add that and come back in June and we act on it in June, that's fine. I really okay. just wanted it by the June meeting. Um, so are folks feeling okay about that? And please, if you have something else, share it prior to them, like meeting in the next two weeks. Just a thumbs up, then Jamie will know that we can, we can come back and go for it. Or is that... That's good. Ray, Ray, Kate, and I have a meeting tomorrow. So no, I expected to possibly address it. So no, we're good. Okay. And do, do we need to talk about? That's next. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that the portrait of a learner? Portrait of a learner. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the next one. So to kick off the portrait of a learner discussion, so you did. We got about ten board members that participated in providing feedback on the different drafts that we had prior, plus bills, um, language, and pictures. Uh, we used that feedback and went and secured a different graphic um, artist to assist us with trying to capture our, you know, picture in regards to what are our key indicators and also incorporating the pillars of the community schools that we're operating under, which are also embedded within the communication plan. And so what you have is... Um, one portrait of a learner that was provided, there's a little change in the scheme of the colors around the mountains below in regards to um, our newly uh, acquired uh, graphic designer that we've been working with that looks like this.
And some of you, I mean, I, I will just speak bluntly. I think this is a big improvement over the last uh, four drafts. Um, yeah, and yeah so, this one I thought really stood out. But, but <clears throat> some of you, you know, we try to take your feedback on some of you had things you liked about the previous drafts as well that we tried to highlight um, and communicate to the graphic designer. And I know there was also a desire to make certain that we were capturing um, nature. So I think this one did a pretty good job about that. And then just want you to know that Bill did today also provide his own thoughts around uh, the portrait of a learner as well. And I'll let him speak to that here in a second. Um, what I want to make certain the board knows is that some of the concerns I have around ch changing language um, at this point is, and some of the feedback we received from folks that participated in this work, is that they felt like there had been a large, long, like year-long process of engaging in what they wanted those ends to be. So I just think if we're gonna change it, if the board gives directions tonight to change the language on some of our ends, I do think we need to go back to that committee and talk that through with them. Because I worry about valuing the process. We did a lot of stakeholder feedback and I want folks to make certain that they know that we, that that's important work that we do in regards to when you give us that feedback that we wouldn't go changing it without having a conversation around it. Uh, Michael? Yeah, I just, um, I, I guess I just have a question about Jamie about whether or not that would actually be board overreach at this point. If, if you've had a committee of folks, I mean, I was on that committee, so I just full disclosure, but if, if we've had a committee working for that amount of time on something um, with that level of involvement, uh, I just wonder if it's really the the place of the board to have it go back to the drawing board. So I'm just, it's just a question. I'm not, you know, I'm not upset. I'm not angry. I'm not, I'm just, it's just, you know, procedural. No, I mean, I think if it's a board, if it was the will of you to do it, that's why I'm advising that you would need to go back at yeah. least have the spokesman from the board. And I'm more than happy to support that work, but really needs to go back to the committee. I would not advise you taking action on changing the language without having closed that loop. And Stacy. Yes, I kind of agree, agree with Michael. Um, if we've done this much user research, and it sounds like there's been a, a, a thorough commu uh, committee vetting, um, I don't think it's within the boards, uh, unless there's something extremely abhorrent that we have to address, I don't think we should be changing what the community and the committee has already kind of outlined. Um, so it, it seems like it would be uh, an overreach from my perspective. Thank you. And Bill, did you want to speak? Did you? Yeah, am I up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Bill's up there. Yep. Yeah. I hear where you're coming from. What impressed me so much is we have a process that involved representatives from our whole organization kids of all ages, uh, teachers, uh, administrators, principals, uh, consultants leading us through a process. I was involved in some of that. It's very, very, I thought, um, uplifting. And what this is all about, I think, is extremely important. What is the portrait of our learners when they either graduate from, from elementary school or middle school or high school. This is a message, this is a vision that represents White River Valley Supervisory Union. And it's worth doing this as best as we can. And I know there's frustration from the staff part being absolutely tired of hearing from me or going through the fourth version, the fifth version of the design. We haven't really zeroed in on the attributes yet. But the first thing I like to say is this is important. And it's so important that if we don't do it tonight, and I don't recommend we do it tonight, this is something that this board should spend some serious time on. And I'm gonna be recommending that at our upcoming SU board retreat 
we look at this seriously. I don't recall, uh, because we've got this enormous agenda, that we've been able to zero in on what are the key attributes of our graduates, of our learners. What are they and why? We, we've got the recommendations from staff and that whole process, but we have a responsibility. Does it, those things, are they the most critical attributes for our students? going forward, and I think that question has not been adequately answered, and I've got some questions about them. So I urge us to be patient. I agree with Jamie wholeheartedly that to do something and knock the legs out of everybody else that's worked hard on this is not something that we want to do. So whatever we decide needs to have a feedback loop Again, I don't think this thing is critical that we have to do it tonight or next month. What's critical is we do it right. And it's something that not only is good, but we're proud of. And I'm not sure that what we've, the draft we have tonight is something that is the best it can be. No matter how much the process has been, it deserves our critical oversight. That's why we're board members. That's why we are here tonight spending our nights and our days reading the mail and, 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 and trying to do the right thing here. So I, so I urge us to take a time to think about this some more and look at an opportunity. And I think we have an old off ramp here, which is the retreat. Why do we have a retreat? To talk about important things face to face about what's going on and where we want to go as a board and a supervisory union. And this is just made to order to be uh, a key agenda item for that upcoming retreat. And I really appreciate Jamie suggesting that we have a retreat in August and, and we have a majority there that we can do it. And Kathy's been fighting for this for, for years. Relative to what we're looking in front of us is two things. And I ask, one is, is this design eye-catching? I mean, if we're gonna, Think about it. You're, you're, you're at a podium and you're speaking to the, the audience. Are you going to say something to kick this thing off that gets their attention? Does this current draft do that? And the second thing is, does it effectively communicate what we're trying to say? And I've got concerns that as far as we've come with this draft, it's not far enough. I'll give you an example. Portrait of a learner, those are the key attributes we're looking for. If you look at this design, the, key, the font of the key attributes are small. The big font is what's below in the mountain, which is the way we get that, the, the means to the end. The end is what are our graduates, are our learners going to, um, to know and be? And so that, to me, is, is something right there. The second thing is, we've got a symbol of a mountain with a, a, a faint river. This isn't a mountain community. We're the White River Valley community. And if you look at the pinwheel at the top, and you look at the, the gorgeous river that runs between our, our communities that we're proud of, that gives us inspiration, I don't think what we're looking at is inspirational. And I think what we're trying to do as educators is inspirational. And I think this a design that we come up with should be ins inspirational. That's why um, I've played around with the White River. Uh, it's beautiful. It's moving. When you think of the symbol of a pinwheel and a river, what draws your attention? A river, it, the river of life. We've got currents, we've got rapids, we've got, we've got smooth water, and it's located in this beautiful valley that we call the White River Valley in this beautiful state of Vermont. Why can't our portrait of a learner reflect that magic? Um, so, so, Bill, I don't mean to interrupt. I've heard you say that. I haven't heard the board say that. No, yes, yes. Your, your board members did not give positive feedback to the initial picture. So I'd like to hear from all of them tonight. And I just want to say, Jamie, uh, that um, that the picture 
didn't have any words on it. No, but let's let and, folks and talk. And I'm saying, like so this is the first they, time they've say. seen a combination of how you can um, and, uh, have the attributes as well as the design. And the second part of this thing is not only the design is we've got attributes, which is communication. We've got attributions like uh, curiosity. We've what about what our students are going to be? Are they going to be curious or curiosity? Are they going to be um, creative or are they going to be creativity? Are they going to be so part of this whole thing that we haven't really tackled is are we talking about what we hope our students are going to be or are we talking about categories of learning? All right, so let, okay. So one, I would like to go around and hear what everybody thinks about the draft, the, this draft. And two, Michael, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. Um, maybe you can just come, give a little bit of feedback to the board of how, how some of the thought process of how, how we got, got to these. Is that putting you too much on the spot? <coughs> Well, I don't, I don't feel it's my place to try and speak for the entire committee, but I, I would say that, um, you know, it was definitely uh, uh, a real cross between uh, administrative leadership, teachers, paraprofessionals, students, uh, you know, uh, board members. Um, a lot of data was collected at the schools um, at the student level, and it was, you know, sort of poured through by the folks on the committee. Um, you know, to go back now and and question that, um, I, I'm going to say is uh, going to be a little bit of an affront to that work. OK, so, um, you know, Bill, I can understand you or some other people might have some feelings about it. Um, you know, uh, the size of font can be adjusted. Um, you know, you, this this thing could be parsed out in dozens of different ways, depending on who you put together in a, in a room for uh, the course of a year to go through it. Um, I'm I think we have to be really careful here. We charged a group of people, including quite a few students, to come up with this document and to question it or send it back is to disempower those folks. And I worry about the, the message there. So. I, I'm going to say to folks, unless you have some really serious concerns about this, um, I don't think it's our place. I would agree with Stacy. I think it's a real overstep on the part of the board. So I'll leave it at that. All right. So what we're going to do is, so Stacy and Andrew, I see your hands up, but I would like to hear feedback from everybody on the the one that that came out of the com the committee, the the final draft that we just got from the new. If there's any questions or concerns, and then we can talk further but Stacy go ahead oh now I gotta hi um, so the the only thing that I have a comment on in terms of this graphic um, is I think that maybe utilizing a more familiar topographical mountainscape to what we have with our rolling hills that display the valley might make people a little happier because um, that's definitely not a mountainscape from anywhere around here um, but we do have some lovely ones. The other thing is, I feel like we've gotten to the point, and this is just somebody coming in, that we're at decision paralysis. We made a decision to empower these students, like Michael said, and now we're sitting here second guessing that. And I don't feel like that is, um, that, that's a zero sum game. No one is gonna be ever 100% happy with whatever we do. But what we did do is take a cross section of our population and come up with this. And although I prefer the mountains to look more like our little hills and valleys um, and not like something up north in Waterbury, um, I'm totally cool with the concept of the wording and everything. Um, but we are definitely just spinning our wheels. We could send this back 50 times and people on this board are not gonna agree with it. We've empowered the people who are on the committee um, and we need to respect that. Thanks, Stacy. Maggie? You're muted. You're muted, Maggie. Eric, thank you. Uh, I, I hate it when my microphone's not on the right setting. Um, I had two questions. One is, um, 
where was was that um was it like a a a made up area or was that pulled for something from something michael do you know maggie i don't understand your question was what made up that um the mountain topography oh i i'm that's that all of that is beyond the work of the group of the committee yeah, no, that, so, that was done by the graphic right uh, Maggie, i don't know where she grabbed that mountain from okay I was just curious. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it looks nice. I, I think I would uh, appreciate that if it was, if it was like, you know, the my view of the whites or something local, um, if that's what we're highlighting. But that's not the, the, no pun intended. But that's not the hill that I would die on. So I, I would, um, I would say go for it. I, I don't want to get lost in the weeds on this. Uh, at the expense of of um, disempowering the work and the folks that put in that time and effort. I hate it personally when we assign people to a committee and then we discount everything we do. Why do we create a committee to do it in the first place? Eric, did you have something you had to uh, I did. And I think that um, my comment goes something like this. Um, I am not a graphic designer, nor do I play one on TV. Um, I, it, it is um, the providence of people who are way more artistic than I will ever pretend to be, to be able to come up with graphic designs. I do agree with Bill that the um, that this body has the ultimate authority to um, either say yay or nay on a direction that we're headed in. The question that I have is: Is this design? the recommendation of the committee. And if it is the recommendation of the committee, um, why would we, um, as non-graphic designers and not having been involved in the process, why would we, um, you know, on, on what basis would we say to this committee um, th that this design is not appropriate? Michael, Eric, um, good point. The design is not was not uh, the focus of the committee. It was the the wording, the process, um, arriving at uh, the verbiage, not the design. So if if the design changes, that's not necessary. That's not an affront to the people who did the work. Okay, Correct. if you go in and change the language, that's a whole nother matter. So thank you for asking that question, Andrew. Um. I mean, I on the overall discussion about whether we should approve or like whether we can provide feedback, it does seem like the job as a board is to approve or disapprove it. So, you know, I think when we're given opportunities to provide feedback, we need to provide it early in the process. I feel like Bill has certainly been doing that all along. So if he wants to continue to repeat his suggestions, I, I don't see any problem with that. And then it's up to us as a board whether we agree with what he's saying or not. But, you know, ultimately, we're the board that's approving or disapproving of this. So I do feel like we should have a say of whether, you know, we feel like there are things that should be changed. And I don't think anybody's suggesting that we take all the work and throw it out. It's more, you know, like, do we have a view of a river that represents uh, just the specifics of the graphic and whatnot? I do certainly know that trying to come up with a graphic design by committee is just going to be a disaster. Uh -huh. um, so, but I think having some general feedback, like I like the general feedback of let's try and have the mountainscape be more representative of our area, the river more prominent, something along those lines. So those are kind of clear feedback that's not throwing everything away, but is kind of hopefully guiding it towards a more positive space. You know, I, I don't really... I, I'm not much on aesthetic judgment, so I'm not going like, to weigh in much one way or the other. <laughs> but I do think if there are people who have strong opinions, we should be able to share them. And it's not an affront to a committee that has put in a lot of work. It's taking the work the committee's done and trying to move it forward. Um, so, yeah. And, and nobody's talking about going back to square one. It's taking the work and just presenting it a little differently or something along those lines. I think there's more changes than just the... Yeah. Can, can I weigh in also? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
going back to Bill's point, I must say that when I first um, read this and saw a portrait of a learner, I was expecting different wordage, like instead of flexible thinking, flexible thinker, instead of resiliency and well-being, resilient. And I, to me, those adjectives are describing a learner. And these, this particular wording, I'm not an English major. I forget all of the parts of speech stuff. But in any case, I don't feel like academic proficiency is describing a portrait of a learner, that it would be academic, academically proficient. Does, is that kind of what one of your points was? Absolutely. And I mean, I don't know if it's a hill worth dying for, but I mean, it's, it is definitely as soon as I was reading that and I was reading those, I was like, oh, shouldn't it be academically proficient, not academic proficiency? I don't know. Maybe, any English majors here <laughs> that can speak to that? I think it describes a group, not an individual. So like the academic proficiency is what we're looking for as a supervisory union, not necessarily an individual. If we were describing an individual, we would say that person must be academically proficient. We're describing our supervisory union. And I think that we are encouraging academic proficiency and resiliency, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But once again, not an English major. Yeah, I, it's not English. It's it's we're not describing our organization. We're describing our learners. Are our learners academic proficiency or are our learners academic? I think you would have it so, so WRVSU learner is academically proficient or yeah, you know like that's what, that was my point. Um, they're curious. They're I meant I meant a WRVSU learner has. Like right now, it's phrased as a WRBSU learner has academic proficiency, creative and creativity and, and curiosity. So it's it's just a kind of like how we phrase that intro, whether it's whether what they have a, or what they are. The other thing I want to butt in with academic proficiency because it's been mentioned by two or three of us. Right now, the draft fourth draft has one of the six pedals or whatever you want to call it is academic proficiency. And I believe to the deepest part of my heart that academic proficiency isn't one of the six. It is the found bear very the foundation of our learners to be academically proficient. And based on that foundation, we want them to be curious and creative and collaborative and healthy and resilient and citizens who care and lifelong learners. And we want them to be um, future ready. But it's all based on that academic. That's why I have a problem here. It's one leaf. No, it is the foundation of what we're doing here. And so that alone to me is critical flaw if we could change that and I've suggested some language which is built on a foundation of academic proficiency W R S V D uh, V U uh, S U learners are and then we have an open spot and I suggest that open spot based on that academic proficiency is two things one is lifelong learners one of our jobs is to light that light of joy of learning I'm of the John F. Kennedy um, generation. And when he died on the, um, his memorial, his grave was the e eternal flame. What we're trying to build here is the eternal flame for learning, a love of learning. And we want that to grow and, and, and blossom. And until they're my age and beyond, that love of learning. And I think that should be embedded in here. And I suggest that be one of the things. It doesn't go against the committee and all the input here to say that they're against lifelong learning. So let's not have it a, a zero sum game here. But I think that's worthwhile. And the other one is our job, they've, our kids have got to be ready for the future. That has to be one of our 
critical goals here for every one of our students. It's not mentioned here. So let's not make it zero sum. I'm suggesting let's make sure that they're future ready. So um, I hear you saying it's us uh, changing and, and we're doing disrespect for the committee in that process. I've been part of that process. No, let's just make sure that it is full and robust and fulfills the quality of education this organization is providing and, and seeks to provide in the future. Andrew? Sorry, I didn't mean to have my hand up there. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Stacy. So, I know that I am new, and I say this trying to be respectful as possible because I have not been in the past meetings. But I know a lot of really smart people who know academics, who have zero common sense or resiliency or flexible thinking. Going into talking about getting our people ready for the future, that's flexible thinking. The future is constantly changing and they need to have this flexible thinking. And when I look at this, it looks like the committee and the young people who were involved with it took that into account. Um, academic proficiency is huge. I went to Catholic school, I was smacked with a ruler, and I absolutely got academic proficient. But having some of those effective communication skills and the other things, it's an entire picture. You can have a absolutely straight A student who is paralyzed to think with flexibility or help in the community or be creative. There are a lot of things besides academic proficiency, which makes somebody successful. And I think once again, it is not taking away from academic proficiency, but adding to it to prepare our learners and have this portrait of the learner showing that concept. People who did this, just looking at this, had some real thoughts about what else is important besides academic proficiency. They were thinking of the future, and I think it's very obvious with this wording, and besides the fact that the mountains aren't ours, um, it, it seems very well thought out. Um, the graphic is the graphic, but the wording is very important. And I, I really just feel that minimizing that as a board is just knocking out all the work these people did, especially the young people who were supposed to empower with the resiliency, with the flexible thinking, with the community responsibility. We're giving them the example of what we're trying to show them by giving them this power, by empowering them. And we're just going to say, no, we're going to change it all. It's included and it's very, very vital. I don't see anything there that should be minimized or placed ahead. I yield. All right, so Stacy. So thank you, Stacy. <clears throat> so we'll go. Um, Maggie, do you have a take on this? You kind of gave us your take. I think we just could go through each person and um, see what their feelings are about what we have here and if there's strong feel for changing it. Maggie? Um, can we have a time cap on how long we share additional thoughts at this stage? Um, sure. oh, I'll just exercise my own uh, and model that for the future. I, I, I support it. Uh, if there was possibility in the shifting of a local landscape, I would support that even more. Yes, so I'm saying, Maggie's saying keep it short. I would agree with her. <laughs> Michael? Michael? <clears throat> You know, I mean, obviously, I was part of the committee. Um, um, the graphic is less important to me than the words that, that it uh, portrays and communicates. And I really appreciate Stacy's overview on that. That was the intent was to capture, um, you know, the skills that we thought people were going to need moving forward in the future. And those are the six, um, those uh, pieces on top. And I support it. And I appreciate the opportunity to work with those faculty and staff and those kids. All right, thanks, Michael. Andrew? 
Um, I I like it. Uh, I think I would support the graphic change as as we've been talking about with a local landmark. The other thing I would say is just adding a sentence saying a White River Valley graduate has or will have or something along those lines that makes the tense or whatever, you know, the way that it's phrased each of the attributes make sense as far as like, you know, a White River Valley graduate will have resiliency so that we can phrase it in that way and not have to change the tense. And that's a pretty simple, small change. Thank you, Andrew. Eric? I will um, support what Andrew and Maggie have just said. Dustin? <laughs> Basically, uh, the same verbiage I was going to use. Uh, yep. So, <laughs> yep. I second, I third that, I guess. Yeah. Sylvia? Thanks for all your work on that. <laughs> I think we should stick with the work that the committee did. Um, I do like the idea of changing the mountains to something that looks more local, but I don't think we should change what came out of the committee. Um, so, Siobhan? I'm okay with it. Is Amy? I like the wording. Um, I could be okay with the uh, graphic, but I do agree that with the mountainscape if we could get something a little uh, better. That would be great. I do really like that valley um, water that comes through it, um, and it's not too prominent. Um, and I do like the wording. Um, all right, uh, I'll go. I I like this last one that came out. It kind of it really stood out to me when I got it in my email. I was like, way way better than the ones that we got before for a graphic. I would totally support a more local mountain graphic. Um, I agree with you, Andrew, that maybe we can put that wording in there so it, it fits more with what you were saying. Um, and I hear all the things you're saying, Bill, but I do want to respect and appreciate what our committee did. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into thinking through that. Um, okay. Yeah, I would love to have whatever sentence they could come up with that would capture what Andrew was saying, because then I'd feel good about the tense of all of that. I mean, but even if that didn't happen, I, I'm I'm still good with it. Yeah, same here. And um, Bill, I know I know where you're at. Is there any more feedback you want to add? Yeah, I, my suggestion is the, the design, I, I, I just love the White River, and I, I think it's more beautiful and why we can't have the White River is uh, the backdrop of our portrait of a learner uh, is just beyond me. Uh, I'm not into pinwheels. Um, on the attributes, I do think we describe through adjectives and not nouns mm. what we want our learners to be. And the six that I suggested are very close to what's been pro provided by the c committee and, or they could be supplemented by my suggestions. So it's not we reject the committee, it, we enhance the committee's efforts to to develop something that is really beautiful and effective. Uh, I'm not in favor of the draft as as is. So, so I think if we were to take a vote tonight, it, we would accept the portrait of a learner with a couple of small edits. So Jamie, can you guys get the small edits that we talked about done? We'll bring it back and we'll vote on it at June meeting. That works. Can can I mention one other thing? I the personal community response and yeah, the personal and community responsibility graphic. What is that? <laughs> I have a hard time trying to interpret what that little graphic. I mean, I understand there's a person in the middle of that puzzle piece, but I don't, I, I don't know that graphic. I'm I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> I'm not a graphic designer, but I'll ask. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just I like all of the other ones. They all make yeah, no, sense to me, but that yeah. th that one, it's like, hmm, what is that? <clears throat> all right. So we have movement forward. For I that. was proficient in performing arts, visual arts. <laughs> I struggled. Visual uh, arts are not I'm my not. thing. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I appreciate everybody's comments here tonight on it. I think that the, the way we come up with a decision and the way we, yes. we act as a board is, is we talk it through. And um, I think that's why we do good work on our board is because 
we work hard together to get to the to get an end result. And I yep. appreciate everything the committee did. Um, okay. Um, full board retreat planning. Yeah. So I um, I I just wanted to start trying to plan ahead for a full board retreat. I had emailed board chairs with the concept <laughs> of how to like. One, our goal of how do we try to have a full board retreat where we're able to capture a majority of our membership? Uh, one of our voting members, but also just to bring our 31 board members together so that like folks can get to know each other. Um, you know, I think our hybrid option has allowed for a lot better attendance at our monthly meetings. I believe that there's a, there's many of you who have never met outside of a virtual meeting. And so I was trying to figure out how could we bring the full board together, increase attendance um, around a retreat. And so one of the suggestions I made to the board chairs was what happens if we did an August retreat that was on a Saturday, I just threw out Saturday for work schedules, they had a full board retreat component in the morning, lunch together, and then district boards would be able to retreat in the afternoon. And the reasoning for that was to try to increase our attendance, not just have it be the voting members, but, but to try to bring a majority of our board members together across the supervisory union. Um, I know that feedback that I did receive from Will Davis was that a Saturday in August is not good for him in regards to Sharon. Um, for that concept. But I guess, I mean, it's the first time many of you have even heard of it. I was just curious as a full board what your thoughts were around that. Um, we have just struggled over the last couple of years to actually be able to execute a, a full board retreat. Um, and I think part of it is, is that there's just a, that you all are pulled in a lot of directions and you know, when you add a full board retreat, plus your district retreats, plus your committee meetings, like I know, it all starts to add up. Um, and and Stacy, I saw your comment. We yeah, have, that was a good comment, Stacy. Um, but we have done that <laughs> multiple times, and that doesn't doesn't seem to get us the attendance we need. So we're we're we were on the Google surveys and whatever. We've done that. Whatever yeah. the other doodle polls and everything you can. You know, and just so uh, folks know, I mean. Over the last two years, we've tried to hold multiple full board retreats. We've only executed once um, where we actually had a quorum right. of the membership. Otherwise, and both we've had of those were, were really good meetings and really good conversations. And I feel like the board members that were there that attended those, I got to know a lot better. It was, they were really, they're really good if we can get, we can figure out a day where we can have attendance and people would see the benefit to it. And I, I was suggesting August, not because I know people want to give up a August day, but I think having a retreat earlier rather than later is good because I think it really helps us set our work plan out moving forward um, for the upcoming year. Um, so that's why I was suggesting August. And frankly, September comes and we get in the business of being back in schools and then scheduling it seems to be even harder. Um, I, I, so along Stacy's idea of a doodle poll, what if we picked like the first two Saturdays in August and send it out and saw what we got from And just it. see how many board members we could get. See how many people could attend. Hmm. What did you guys think about the idea of trying to do something in the morning, a lunch together, then break off in the afternoon? So we're not asking people to add, you know, two retreats to the calendar versus one day. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I like that idea. Eric? I think it's great so long as you, um, we have enough uh, with moderators um, to uh, to break out into the different um, school boards to do the retreats. Yeah, I... I love the idea. I think we should just basically pull the four Saturdays in August and check off all the Saturdays we can do or can't do and go ahead. 
retreats are critical if we're going to help bond, communicate, connect with one another. And it's one thing to see each other on the screen. It's another thing to be in person. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's, it's, it's critical if we're going to continue to thrive and build and to be the best SU board we can ever be. So that's the retreat value. And secondly, I think this speaks to uh, our shared expectations of re, of what it means to to say yes, I'll be on the SU board. And I think one thing that need, maybe needs to be clarified that we care enough not only to read our package, not only to become prepared, but also to attend a retreat unless you know vacation, sick, or whatever the case is. And we make that a priority. And I, somehow I think that we see it as an option. We need to, if we're going to be really, really good, we need to be together as not everybody, because no Saturday in the summer is going to get everybody, but we should be able to get a majority of us together to celebrate and to focus on not only the past, but where we need to go in the future. And that's what we can do as a retreat. All right. Okay, so we'll put out a, whoops, our board. Oh, she just fell asleep. All right, we'll pull out a, a poll to pick a couple of Saturdays and, and see if we can get. Yeah, and it may be that it works for some district boards, but not others. Yeah. Too, right? But mm -hmm. if it increases our participation in general, yeah. right. I think it's a good. We can we try to the Apple. Yeah, right. All right. Um, so we already did the. Stacy? So uh, I would just recommend, uh, I run into this a lot at work because I work virtually and we're trying to organize like similar stuff. Um, maybe consider doing something that is not necessarily a full board retreat. Uh, I'm assuming we're not going to go somewhere expensive. I assume we're going to do it locally, but maybe consider something in the winter as well when people are not traveling as much. Um, I know weekends in the summer are difficult for many of us who want to take our kids camping and whatnot. So um, I would recommend maybe we consider doing it biannually. Okay, thank you. All right, to be continued, guys. Um, draft for the communication outreach plan, portrait of a learner, so we, we know we're at on that. Is there any other business? Our next meeting date is Tuesday, June 25th at 6 o'clock. And if there's nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Thanks, everybody.